I'm William Sokolov. I'm a bass baritone, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Daniel McGrew, who is not only an amazing tenor, but happens to be one of my dearest friends. Uh, so we're gonna ask him a couple questions. Okay. So it, it feels kind of funny to ask you this question because we've been friends for a while now, but the people don't know. So where did you grow up? I grew up. <laughs> I grew up in Orange, California, which is northern Orange County, um, like 30-something, 30 32 miles from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. south, uh, in a very beautiful place. I mean, I, I, you know, it was a stunning place to grow up. There was, there was a beach You're nearby. You were a right? I, no. <laughs> no. Um, it was beautiful. It was, it was sunny all the time. I mean, I didn't know what a season was until I went to college. Do you come from a musical family? Not at all. Not at all? No. My grandmother, um, whose father ha had been a music lover, mm -hmm. uh, an opera lover, and I played the trumpet, mm -hmm. um, uh, he, sh she said, I think he's kind of musical. Maybe he'd get into something mm -hmm. like that. And so, f so then I was taken to you know, piano lessons and yeah. you know, sang in musicals and things. And it was, that was... Yeah us kind of salvation. So my grandmother was, I mean, in, in my mind, she's responsible for sort of leading me to that mm. in a really yeah. important way. Where, where for you is that path from musicals and plays to classical singing? Well, I think that happened really in high school when I got a serious classical teacher mm -hmm. and he said, why don't you learn, you know, you ever heard of Schubert and probably I had heard yeah. but I didn't know mm. that a bunch of composers had taken poems and set them to mm. music and um, that so immediately funny. captured my imagination obviously I mean it was it was the perfect the the perfect um, combination of uh, the perfect intersection of interests so you're talking about how exciting that time in like middle school, high school, when you discover poems being set to music. What singers, what songs, what recordings really gripped you at that age or still do? Yeah. Or were formative? So initially, I can remember completely obsessing over Fritz Wunderlich singing Dichte Liebe. That's so good. Which is the best thing you've ever heard. Pinnacle. No one, I mean, no one's voice gets so beautiful in the passaggio, yeah. <laughs> like why is it so pretty? Um, and an extraordinary interpretation also. It's just a, it's yeah. an amazing sort of investigation into that piece. Where did you go to college? I went to Oberlin mm -hmm. Conservatory of Music. Um, and it was the best place uh, for me to be at that time. Well, I, I had a, an amazing teacher, mm -hmm. Salvatore Champagne, who gave me like the, the best foundation um, and a great coach who just like taught me how to deal with the languages. And it was all undergrad, so I got a, a lot of roles. So it was a really formative time. I sang my first Bach yeah. there, which totally yeah. like exploded my sense of what it meant to like learn music, sing uh, music. Uh, you know, it was just like a, a universe that felt new at the time. Yeah. And was it that kind of discovery of Bach that led you to Yale afterwards? It was a few things, if I'm honest. I mean, mm -hmm. there was the fact that everyone agreed that my voice was suited to early music. Yeah. Because um, I went to Yale for in the early music program, mm -hmm. which is distinct from the opera program. Yes. It seemed like an interesting prospect to focus on early tradition and learn about how it works and the conventions that are at mm -hmm. play, which are, you know, different. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just a different skill set, a mm -hmm. different style. At what point did you first encounter young concert artists, and how now does YCA play into that musical path? Well, I became aware of it probably just v via sort of colleagues, mm -hmm. you know? It's mm -hmm. the way I become aware of a lot of things. Someone says, oh, I'm doing this. You, know? yeah, <laughs> you think, yeah. what is it? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was involved in two rounds, two seasons of auditions. Yeah. That, that is, I auditioned one year, uh, went pretty far, and then was not one of the winners. A year passed, the year you won, I think. Yeah? I think so. And then the next year I, I decided to do it again. The, the, the team here at YCA, working with them and having 
their counsel, having their, um, you know, they negotiate contracts, they help me sort of uh, negotiate conversations with presenters, mm -hmm. you know. I can come with them with an idea or a project, mm -hmm. and they'll say, yeah, let's see how that could happen. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just a, it's a really, really helpful resource when you're trying to get some momentum going. So tell me a little bit about the process you went through of putting together this program that is so, it's so varied in nature. I just yeah. want to hear about how you got there. I approached it thinking about what I get out of songs, which is a lot, mm. and how I can make a program about that. Yeah. Um, hoping that that personal quality, that conviction will, will you know, lead to or result in a vivid and personal experience for the audience. Yeah. The idea of ambivalence, the feeling of being conflicted, of having m so many selves mm -hmm. and trying to hold them all at once. The fight to believe in oneself and in others and in something bigger than oneself, yeah. the inability to you know, John Donne is the perfect person in a way. I know he is basically one of the most important religious writers in English and one of the most powerful, you know, erotic poets in English. Yeah. It's yeah. a strange yeah. dichotomy. He died an Anglican priest. He was born a recusant Catholic. Yeah. You know, um, He's a, he's, he embodies all these conflicts and it's very present in those sonnets. You know, there, there are so many moving moments in the Dun, especially the song in which he mourns the death of his wife. Mm -hmm. Anne, since she whom I love, present tense, yeah. has paid her last debt, heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. In these tiny little jewels of a song, mm -hmm. we can sort of unfold the entire all of the most crucial things yeah. about what we're feeling yeah. and what we're struggling with and um, and what we're looking for. In, in the program note I've said, it, the, the songs may not sort of solve the riddle for us, they may not teach us exactly who or how to be, but they do something at least as important in making us less alone. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's why I love them so much, yeah. I mean that's why I need them. Yeah. Um, that's what the recital's about for me. Yeah. So, so are we where, what are we doing now? now? Should I wear these like some sort of celebrity? I mean, how much do I look like an absolute? Coffee or tea? Coffee. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Met or MoMA? Met. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. What are you reading right now? Okay, so I just I, re I just finished Persuasion for the first time. Mm. I'm also reading A.R. Ammons. Okay, I was at a used bookstore in Ann Arbor, and there was this tiny little volume of mm -hmm. selected A.R. Ammons by David yeah. Lehman. I bought it. I started reading it. I'm obsessed. Wow. What's your go-to cocktail order? Okay, Boulevardier. I knew you were going to say it. I knew it. But... Also this summer, I mean, again, I'm plagued by ambivalence. This summer I had an aviation that I feel yeah. was a revelation, yeah. frankly. Call and I can't stop thinking about it. Not to mention it was lavender. I mean, it's oh. the most beautiful I mean, thing. that's summer. What's your favorite podcast? Uh, Poog, probably. I mean, that's the one I listen to all the time. I love Poog. And I listen to it because of you. It's, well, so I have great taste. Influencer. But, um, yeah. Who's your most listened to artist on Spotify? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm obsessed with Joni. Me too. I, I still listen to Joni as though she's releasing things. Me too. Like as though Blue right, came right. out yesterday. Yeah. If you had to play in, in any instrument, what would it be? Cello. Cello. Yeah. Because everyone who plays cello is extraordinarily hot <laughs> and sexy <laughs> and the instrument is hot it's true the sound is everything i've ever dreamed of mm -hmm. the repertoire is stunning better than any yeah cello <laughs>